from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. A weekend motorcycle ride turns tragic in the North County. Good evening, I'm Rael Creighton. Right now, police trying to piece together what happened. 10 News reporter Emily Thode live at the medical examiner's office. Emily, they still have not identified that man killed. No, right now, p uh, people from the medical examiner's office are busy trying to track down all of the man's family to give them the terrible news. I want to take you to the scene in Escondido. This is what it looked like. Crime scene tape blocking off the intersection at Rincon and Country Club Lane. It was right in front of North Broadway Elementary School. There's a three-wheeled trike, white motorcycle. A smash banged up. We also saw a silver Prius with the large den in the side. Escondido police say the two collided just before 10 a.m. The man riding that trike, 79 years old from Escondido. He was the one killed. Police have not said who was at fault. Neighbors say that stretch of road is dangerous. Since I've been here, there's been several lives lost here. And the driver of the Prius was not hurt. Police do not think either driver was impaired. I'm live at the medical examiner's office. Emily Tho, 10 News. Emily, thank you. A man is dead after jumping off of the Ocean Beach Pier. It happened last night. Police told 10 News the man got into an argument with two men. Those men threw his belongings off the pier. And then the victim jumped into the water to retrieve his stuff. Police say the man was asking for help while he was in the water. By the time first responders found him, it was too late. His girlfriend in tears shortly after lifeguards and firefighters found his body. Witnesses say the water was rough. Police are not investigating this as a criminal matter. Meantime, police are reviewing surveillance video after a woman became trapped in a donation bin. It happened outside of the Albertsons on 14th and Market Street. Police say the woman was half in the container when they arrived, so she was unresponsive. Rescuers got her out and took her to UCSD with unknown injuries. Well, now to a developing story. A local congressman could be in hot water as dozens of constituents came out today saying they support an investigation into Representative Duncan Hunter. 10 News reporter Jessica Chen is in Escondido where they pack busy street corners. That's right, more than 100 people lined the sidewalk here holding up signs so that everybody who drove by could hear and see their message. Duncan Hunter has to go. I'm angry, One, but two, I'm trying three, to channel it. Sue Burke says it's a group effort. It helps, I think, to come out and join with other people. To stand united. Where are you from? I'm Santee. She says they want Representative Duncan Hunter to be held accountable. I'd love to see politicians held to account who are not representing people and are corrupt. More than 100 people gathered outside the Westfield Mall in Escondido with their signs. No fear. No fear. No fear. Last month, the Department of Justice opened a criminal investigation into Hunter, saying he and his wife inadvertently used a credit card tied to his re-election campaign for personal use. You know, $65,000. Ted Duvall says he was angry when he heard about this. I was very pleased to hear that the Justice Department took over the investigation of his ethics violations. I think it's a lot easier to to see them holding him accountable. Resorts Costco runs. There's some of the things Duncan spent the money on. The congressman has repaid every cent to his campaign, but experts say that may not be good enough. Really, the, the main thing is is uh, visibility and transparency. It has to be a transparent investigation. Sue says she's glad the federal government is looking into this. We need someone who really represents us. The details of the investigation are still unclear, but Hunter's attorney tells us that he will cooperate with the investigation. We reached out to his office today for a comment, but they have not gotten back to us yet. In Escondido, Jessica Chen, 10 News. Jessica, thank you. Well, a separate group of protesters are hoping to impeach the president with a curse. Today, a dozen witches gathered in Balboa Park to protest President Trump. They signed pink slips and put a, quote, curse on the president. The event called Fire the Foul was hosted by Ground Zero players. People at the event say they are horrified by the president's actions. It's incredible that anybody could be so stupid as to do so many things that are um, hurtful to the American people. 
Well, many Trump supporters argue the president is creating jobs and making the country safer. Meantime, with the Russian investigation dominating headlines, the president striking back today as the man who heads up the congressional investigation faces more questions. ABC's David Wright is tracking the new developments from Washington. Having already called the investigation into Russian meddling in the U.S. election a witch hunt, President Trump was back at it again today, venting his outrage on Twitter. It is the same fake news media that said there was no path to victory for Trump that is now pushing the phony Russia story, a total scam. But the president's tweets don't square with his own cabinet members' public positions. So you had yesterday the spectacle of the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense talking about uh, the Russian uh, incursion into our election, and the White House, led by the president, continues to, to back away from it. The ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, visited the White House Friday, reviewing the same classified documents his GOP counterpart, Devin Nunes, saw in secret last week. Schiff said he saw no reason the documents were shared at first only with the Republican chairman and not the full committee. There's not a better person in the House of Representatives to do this investigation than me. Also dominating the Russia conversation, Trump's former national security advisor, Mike Flynn. He's now requesting immunity in exchange for his testimony. Were you trying to tell the Justice Department to grant immunity to Michael Flynn? On Friday, Trump would not stay for an answer to those questions, but he did tweet that Mike Flynn should ask for immunity. Apparently, Trump's views on immunity have changed since the campaign when he railed at Hillary Clinton aides granted immunity for testifying about her email server. And if you're not guilty of a crime, what do you need immunity for, right? So does the president think that Mike Flynn is guilty of a crime? I think Mike, he believes that, that Mike Flynn should go testify. So far, no one in Congress has taken Flynn up on his request for a deal. David Wright, ABC News, Washington. Taking a live look outside, it is a picturesque San Diego spring day. 10 News Pinpoint Weather anchor Jennifer De La Cruz tracking some fog moving in overnight. Fog moving in overnight, but it was absolutely beautiful today. Great way to start the weekend. A whole lot of sunshine, not a whole lot of clouds in the sky. Such a great Saturday for you if you were able to get outside. Live look outside in Coronado. Very clear, not a whole lot of cloud coverage, but we do have that fog moving in starting overnight temperatures right now 70 degrees and sunny in San Diego 63 in La Jolla 68 in Kearney Mesa 72 in El Cajon 24 hour temperature change were warmer than where we were yesterday by 8 degrees in San Diego 10 degrees Mount Laguna and Campo are mountains and deserts feeling a little bit warmer overnight tonight on the coast dropping down to 54 degrees that patchy fog is going to start to move in after 11 o'clock tonight inland communities dropping down 51 degrees Slightly calm winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour, coming from the west mountain areas, 48 degrees. The, that fog is moving in overnight, but it's shaping up to be another nice day tomorrow. And I'm tracking a warm-up coming up in your seven-day forecast. All right, Jennifer, we'll wait for that. Meantime, you may have felt an earthquake that rattled the county late last night. The U.S. Geological Survey reports it was a magnitude 3.5 quake. The star on this map showing the epicenter down in Tawana. It happened at around 1140 last night. Well, a day at a hotel pool turning deadly, sky-high carbon monoxide levels killing one child. Thirteen victims, seven of them children, were rushed to the hospital in Michigan. One of those ch children did not survive. Officials say carbon monoxide levels were too high in both the pool area and parts of the hotel building. Which is to say the pool looked like a mass casualty scene. And I walked past the pool and there were literally just five bodies laying. All the kids were surrounded. The pool passed out throwing up. The entire hotel was evacuated. Investigators are looking at the pool heater as a possible source of the toxic gas. New details, a chilling video showing what led up to that church bus crash that killed 13 people in Texas. He's going to hit somebody head on or he's going to kill his own damn self. Somebody needs to get this guy off the road. Jody Kulcher was driving behind that truck and called 911. His girlfriend shot this video. Kulcher says the driver was all over the road. Police say 20 year old Jack Young was behind the wheel. The truck slammed into a church bus heading home from a Bible study retreat. Kulcher says the scene, the truck driver told him he had been texting while driving. I think my mind kind of went blank. I didn't know what to think. I mean, I mean, you're, you just cost 13 people's lives. You're talking about grandmothers, grandfathers. Well, there are bans on texting and driving in 46 states. Texas is not one of them. The NTSB is investigating. 
There's new information tonight. The pest control worker who fell off of an Escondido house and died has been identified as Jack Ruiz. The medical examiner says he was 66 years old and lived in a small town east of Alpine. A co-worker found him on the ground outside of a home on Oak Hill Drive in Escondido Thursday. It appeared that Ruiz fell about 10 feet. New video that's not smoke or fog that you're seeing at the top of your screen. That is snow. A witness caught a massive avalanche on a camera on Mount Juno in Alaska. The snow stopped just 15 feet from a neighborhood at the foot of the mountain. The fire department took these pictures of it piled up on the road. There are no reports of any injuries. Well, with their first game just two days away, the Padres are pumping up fans for the season. 10 News reporter Gracia Aguilar was at the team's annual Fan Fest today at Petco Park. Hundreds of fans are showing support for the Padres, and this year Fan Fest has been a huge hit with the crowd. I love San Diego. Yeah. Coming down, folks. Plenty of room down this way. Padres fans lining up around Petco Park ready to get the season started. Come out here, have some fun, meet, meet the players and all that stuff, get a lot of free stuff, you know. Some waiting to get up close and personal to some of their favorite players. That was awesome. Saw my hat right here. And Andy Green right there too. Others. Never too early. Showing their kids what baseball in San Diego is all about. He went last year and then we're, we've been season ticket holders for a long time. Fans wanting the Padres to know they're rooting for them all the way. The last thing you want is for the Padres to leave. Lord forbid that to happen. Reporting from Petco Park. Yeah. Grecia Aguilar. I love San Diego. 10 News. Let's do video tonight. A treacherous scene off of the Southern California coast as a boater fails to escape pounding waves. Hawking, going to new. areas where home burglaries. And new information about a rash of burglaries targeting celebrity homes. Why investigators think it's just the work of one gang. Plus, press three for election rigging. The April Fool's Day joke from the Russian government. Patchy fog is moving in over the coast tonight. I'm tracking hour by hour when it's going to clear. Coming up in your seven day forecast.